Welcome to the sixth video lecture for the Managing in a Service Environment course. This is the sixth of 14 short video lectures for this semester and it corresponds with Chapter 6 in the textbook. In this lecture, we'll discuss the importance of training, common training methods, the difference between education and training, and employee development techniques. You should complete the corresponding lecture quiz in Blackboard immediately after viewing this video. The additional assignments, reading, and reading quiz for this segment will also be available in Blackboard under the content folder entitled Training. The best hospitality companies understand that training is one of the main keys to success since so much of the hospitality experience depends on the performance of individual employees. Training in a hospitality setting has to go above and beyond the basic job requirements, such as how to put an order through to the kitchen or how to make a guest note in the property management system. Things come up during interactions with customers and guests. Each day is a new adventure when your business is focused on serving people, because each employee and guest bring variances to the transaction. So, employees have to have a very deep understanding of what they're doing to be able to properly accommodate these variances and wow each guest on his or her own terms. Even service naturals, as we described them in the previous lecture, will need to have training so that they can act according to the culture of the organization and the requirements of the job. The book outlines Len Berry's Five Training Principles as a Good Guide to Developing Training Programs in Hospitality Organizations. The first is to focus on critical skills and knowledge for each position. This is something we talked about doing when staffing and developing job descriptions. These are the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you think an employee in that job needs to have to perform their job functions accurately and to a level that is required for excellent customer service. You'll do this when developing training programs as well. This is the sort of training most people think of when they think about job training. It's the nuts and bolts of your training programs and it will vary greatly depending on what position the employee is in. The next principle is to start strong and teach the big picture. This training is probably going to be common to all employees. It's about the vision, mission, goals, and company culture. It helps each employee understand what the organization is all about and how they fit into it. The third principle is to formalize learning as a process. It's about legitimizing training and education as a company goal. It includes things like setting time aside when scheduling for training sessions, paying workers for time spent during training, giving workers time off to go to continuing education outside the organization, etc. It signals to everyone in the company that training is important and valued. The fourth principle is to use multiple learning approaches. Everyone learns differently and some training techniques will be more effective than others depending on the people, jobs, and learning objectives involved. Later in this lecture, we'll go over the most common training methods used in the industry. The final principle is to seek continuous improvement. This principle is closely related to the third principle in that it is about the company belief that training is important. It's not about getting complacent and assuming that if it worked yesterday, it will work tomorrow. Training shouldn't just be scheduled for new hires. It's essential that everyone in the organization constantly works towards personal growth and improvement within their positions and careers. A stagnant organization will not be able to adapt to changes within the business environment. Think about just one aspect of hospitality, technology. Do you think a hotel that does not bother to train their employees in new property management software or social media management is going to fare well in today's business environment if they're using antiquated systems and procedures? No one can stand still and still be competitive in the future. Chances are, your organization will already have a training system and program in place, unless it's a startup organization. 
However, you'll need to review it periodically to make sure it's providing the most benefit for your employees and company that it can under current cir circumstances and needs. Although an emphasis on training is essential for any hospitality organization, the needs of each company will determine what that training looks like and how it's set up. The first question to answer when developing a training program is, what do we need? What are the problems and issues you've been facing within the organization, and how could training help reduce those? You should do an assessment throughout each area of the business to see what the needs are at an organizational, task, and individual level. A good place to start when developing a training program is with feedback from customers or guests. What are they taking issue with? What have they said would make their experience better? Are these things that could be addressed with training, and if so, how? Before you can begin designing specific training programs, you need to identify the objectives of the training, and once you do this, you can build the programs around those objectives. For example, maybe you've been getting guest feedback from your movie theater that the concessions line always moves slowly, and customers are becoming late for their movies while waiting to buy popcorn. This could be for a number of reasons, but if some of the reasons are that the cashiers are slow at taking orders, taking money, or putting together the snack combos, for example, then you can design training programs for them with the objectives of speeding up these processes. When you're designing the training programs, you'll also need to think about how you'll measure and monitor the performance of the employees on these deliverables so that you can see if there was improvement after the training and ultimately so you can decide when more training is necessary. Training can have a substantial cost for an organization no matter what programs are chosen, whether they are internal versus external. There will be expenses like paying the employees as they go through training, paying the instructors of the training, providing the space and materials for the training, etc. Training costs are determined by factors such as the number of employees undergoing the training, where it's held, whether employees will need to travel for the training, the level of expertise needed, how long the training lasts, how frequently the training needs to be scheduled, employee turnover percentages, and the training methods used, and on and on. Some of the training you might arrange for your employees could be from external sources, such as consultants or independent organizations, universities, industry groups, or colleges. Whether you choose internal or external sources of training will depend on many factors, including the resources you have available to you within your organization, what kind of training is required, whether it needs to be customized or if it's on more generic knowledge and skills, and how many employees need to go through the training. For example, if you wanted to promote a specific manager into executive management, but he needed to acquire more general business knowledge, such as in accounting, finance, or marketing, it would probably make more sense for many organizations to send this one employee to an executive development or university program to acquire those skills, rather than trying to arrange it internally. On the other hand, Internal training may be more appropriate, for example, if it's a large organization and the subject being trained is company culture for new hires, it would most likely make more sense to create an internal training program for that purpose. The largest organizations sometimes even have entire departments devoted to training within the company, and this could be for anything from basic onboarding training for new frontline employees to management skills development. There are many different training methods available to hospitality companies, and these are chosen for various reasons depending on the situation. The ones we'll go over include on-the-job training, presentations, simulations, and computer-assisted instruction. Most of you have probably experienced on-the-job training. It's the most commonly used form of training in hospitality, and basically involves the employee performing their normal job duties under supervision of a more experienced coworker or manager. This is usually done one-on-one, -on -one, and on one hand, it's great for the employees since they're able to learn by doing, which is usually the quickest and most memorable way of learning. And they're experiencing the exact conditions that they'll be in when they're doing the job after the training. However, this method of training has the potential to slow down or erode the level of service experienced by customers who are going through the service delivery process with the untrained, inexperienced employee. 
There may also be errors that may need to be corrected after the fact, and that can cause a lot of problems for customers, staff, and the organization depending on the nature and severity of the mistakes. There are other methods of training that do not take place on the job. Simulation is the closest to on-the-job training that you can get without impacting operations. This can take the form of role play and mock service situations, such as when coworkers are asked to pretend to be customers in various service scenarios, and the trainee is supposed to practice their job functions with supervision in this way much like they would in on-the-job training. However, the risks are greatly reduced in simulations since there aren't real customers or guests who could be impacted by the training. Training in the classroom, through videos, at home, and on the computer all take place outside of the employee's normal work environment, so they get less hands-on experience through these methods. However, they have benefits such as having less impact on operations, less risk of resulting in poor service, sometimes they can be less costly, and the videos, home training, and computer training can generally be taken at the employee's own pace. If they need to go back and review something, they can, much like you can do in this online course. These methods also result in very consistent training, so that you know each employee who goes through it is getting the same information and ultimately will have a better chance of performing consistently in the job setting itself. The evolution of great training technology has made computer-assisted training a rapidly growing option for many hospitality companies. There are other approaches to training that you can take. Retraining can be very beneficial to breathe new life into employees who are burned out, have become complacent, need new skills to adapt to new technology, or new ways of performing their existing jobs, or for those that want to move into a different position. Learning new skills and knowledge is an important part of any long-lasting career and can be a powerful tool to reduce employee turnover. Cross-functional training is great for small organizations that may need flexibility in its workers to work in different positions. It can also be very satisfying for employees who undergo the training because it allows them more work opportunities in the future. Some organizations value special competencies such as interpersonal skills, working together as a team, and other non-work task concepts so these organizations will build training programs around those competencies they believe to be important to their vision, mission, and organizational goals. Diversity training can be particularly helpful for hospitality companies, since both our workforce and customers are usually very diverse in terms of culture, race, nation, age, etc. It's very rare to find a hospitality workplace without many different faces and ways of viewing the world there each day, so diversity training can help employees navigate this environment successfully. Since you'll be spending company time and resources on training, it's important that the effectiveness of each type of training is measured. That way you can improve the training offered and only use those methods that are most effective for your employees and the organization. Participant feedback is one way to measure training. It's usually some kind of survey given to the employees who participate in the training session. However, a lot of the times these surveys measure how much the employees enjoyed the training rather than its effectiveness per se. Content mastery is usually some sort of test or exam at the end of the training that measures how much the information was taken in and understood by the participants. This can give a good indication of how much the participants learned, but that new knowledge may be short-lived or not transfer directly to their work. Behavioral change is more difficult to measure and can be impacted by things other than the training itself, but this is a clearer indication of the training effectiveness because it measures actual performance on the job before and after the training. Of course, in my experience, Improvements in performance are generally attributed to the training, whereas declines or no improvement is usually attributed to other things than the training, so I'm not sure how accurate these measures are either. Finally, organizational performance should improve on a grand scale over time if effort is put into effective training programs. All of these measures should be used since none of them are perfect. If you take them all into consideration when evaluating training programs, 
you'll be able to make better decisions about them and improvements to them than if you look at one measure in isolation. So far, we've talked about training that focuses on helping employees perform their current jobs or improve their performance. Employee development, on the other hand, is more about making the employees more adaptable and ready for future changes, either to their own careers, the company, or the competitive environment. Sometimes more is needed to prepare workers for the future than work experience and job training. Education is different than training in that it helps students develop new ways of thinking and learn on their own. It's not about performing a certain job task, it's about problem solving and understanding. Education is a tool for employee development, more so than training. Of course, this requires some guesswork to identify the competencies, skills, and areas of knowledge employees will need in the future. However, if you err on the side of education rather than training with your employee development programs, it will be less of a risk that you identified the wrong specific skills, etc. with your crystal ball. Employee development not only helps companies prepare for organizational needs in the future, such as if the company expands or the necessary knowledge and skills of employees change, but it also benefits the employees who are being developed. It provides a career path where the employees can advance and feel that they are learning and growing, which is a basic human need. The promotion of education in general is very important for hospitality companies that want to develop their employees for the future. Things like tuition reimbursement, time off for education, flexibility in scheduling for current students, internship opportunities, and any other support of general education can pay off greatly in the long run as employees stay longer with and provide more service to the organization. You may think that pouring resources into training and educational programs is altruistic in nature because the individual employees end up having the benefit of those extra knowledge, skills, and abilities, but it's really important for the organization as well. Your competitors will find ways to steal your best people and they're more likely to succeed in doing this if your employees feel their need to grow and develop are not being met. It's up to you whether you give them the opportunity for advancement and keep them or let them stagnate in their current role and level of performance until they move on. This completes the sixth video lecture for managing in a service environment. In this lecture, we covered the importance of training, common training methods, the difference between education and training, and employee development techniques. You should complete the corresponding lecture quiz in Blackboard now. The additional assignments, reading, and reading quiz for this segment will also be available on Blackboard under the content folder entitled Training. In the next lecture, we'll discuss what motivates people and the manager's role in motivation, the different levels of needs, what rewards and incentives you can use to address those needs in the workplace, how to empower employees, the connection between satisfaction and performance, and how all of that affects guest satisfaction.